Welcome to worship at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Williamsburg, Virginia. This Sunday is Holy Trinity Sunday. You can find our order of service on our website under the Worship With Us tab, or if you are a member who has signed up for email communication, you likely receive the order of service via email. We will be referencing both hymn numbers and page numbers. If you happen to have an ELW at home, I would encourage you to make good use of that resource. While today is Holy Trinity Sunday, we will have some Trinitarian portions of our liturgy today. Uh, my sermon dwells primarily, however, on John 3. Uh, so that, uh, that is, the liturgical elements are the extent of our, our uh, acknowledgement of Trinity today. So uh, it's always a difficult topic to, to preach on, so I just sidestepped it. <laughs> So, uh, we have our centering music to open our worship today, and that will be provided by the St. Stephen Ringers, our handbell choir. Our service continues with the Trinitarian call to worship, which can be found in our order of service. Let us worship the triune God. Let us Let worship, worship the one who spoke in the beginning and created something out of nothing. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who took on the clothing of humanity to set those who were oppressed free. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one whose spirit rests continually upon us, calling us from sorrow-filled endings to bright new beginnings. Our gathering hymn this morning is hymn 819, Come All You People.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our canticle of praise, This is the Feast, can be found on page 149. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, taking, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation can be found on page 151. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from 
or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Sisters and brothers, my siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Since the pandemic began, my family has been having weekly Zoom gatherings to check in with each other. We're actually communicating now more than we ever did before, and it's been such a blessing. Enough of a blessing that I'm hopeful that we can keep it up once things are a little more normal. As can often be the case, while we're still sort of warming up in terms of the conversation, we speak of more mundane things like, you know, the weather. Although that's not always mundane, because my sister and her family live in a suburb of Los Angeles. So her reports regarding the weather can include things like wildfires, and droughts, and even earthquakes. I've never personally experienced an earthquake, and I think I'd like to keep it that way. I bring all of this up because I think being so far removed from the events of Jesus' life and ministry, we don't feel the full impact of them on the world. We're too used to the story of Jesus Christ. The fact of the matter is, Jesus' teaching and preaching amounted to a massive religious earthquake for the people of Israel and for the world. In the Gospel of John, this is made abundantly clear in a number of different ways, including in this encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus in John chapter 3. From all outward appearances, Nicodemus is a guy on firm footing. From the text itself, we know that he is both a Pharisee and a leader of the Jews. Further on in the reading, we will hear Jesus call Nicodemus a teacher of Israel. Then, if we move forward in John's Gospel to chapter 7, we will see Nicodemus defending Jesus when the temple authorities sent the police to arrest him. And lastly, we will find Nicodemus providing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds with which to anoint and prepare the body of Christ. Though these mentions of Nicodemus are light on specifics, we can surmise a few things. That he is a respected man with some political and religious clout, as well as some wealth. After all, a hundred pounds of myrrh and aloe would not have been cheap. All of that changes for him one day, that firm footing. We never learn of how exactly Nicodemus first encounters Jesus or hears about him, but something about the Messiah was so compelling that it led Nicodemus to approach him. He is clearly curious about this man who some are claiming is the promised Messiah. And he has reason to be curious. Jesus hasn't done 
a ton thus far in the Gospel of John. After all, we're only in the third chapter, but what he has done would have already been a bit of an earthquake. A quick recap of what's been going on thus far in John. After the prologue, we hear about John the baptizer, but he quickly gives way to Jesus, the Word made flesh. Jesus then begins by calling disciples. After that, he attends the wedding at Cana, where he performs the first of many signs. Then Jesus makes his way to Jerusalem, where he drives money changers out of the temple with a whip and causes all sorts of destruction of property there. He caps chapter 2 off by saying that the temple will be destroyed, but then raised up in three days. So, of course, Nicodemus is curious about this strange Jesus fellow and the earthquakes that he's already been causing. Who wouldn't be? And note how Nicodemus begins the conversation. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Nicodemus is acknowledging the earthquake of Jesus' actions so far in the Gospel and accepting that those earthquakes are a result of Jesus coming from God. In the end, Nicodemus comes off, at least at first, as a guy who knows what's what. He's influential, he's well off, he's learned, and he's bold enough to approach Jesus. All of these together, once again, give the impression of someone on firm theological and political ground. However, one conversation with Jesus, and the ground shakes under him. Perhaps it even drops out from beneath him entirely. Nicodemus started off sure of a few things in our reading today. Jesus is from God. He got that one right. But he was also sure of some other things. He was sure that there was no way someone can be born again. It just can't physically work. He was also sure that there was no such thing as spiritual birth or birth from above. Being a Pharisee, we can also assume that Nicodemus is of the belief that in order to be loved by God, people must please God with sacrifice and with obedience to the law. He would have also understood that righteousness is very difficult, even perhaps impossible, for Gentiles, for the world. Nicodemus is locked into his reality until the reality of God in Christ shakes the very ground of his faith. God has a habit of causing earthquakes in people's lives. In the very next chapter, Jesus will proclaim a message of liberation to the Samaritan woman at the well, which will completely change her life. Later in that same chapter, Jesus will heal a little boy on the brink of death, upheaving that family's understanding of illness. He will heal countless more in the gospel, causing earthquake after earthquake in people's lives. He will even upend the world's understanding of death by raising Lazarus from the grave. But Jesus doesn't just go around upending people's lives without rhyme or reason. As a matter of fact, he even gives the reason for these earthquakes in our reading today. That most famous verse of Scripture, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. That's the why of the earthquake. God so loves us, all of us, the entire world, the cosmos. And God loves us enough to cause earthquakes in our lives. Earthquakes that challenge our certainties especially our certainties around who God's love and grace is for. These earthquakes also remind us that we cannot know the mind of God, and when we start to think that we do, we generally get in trouble. When we become certain that God only loves certain people, 
or that God loves us more than others, or that God loves us less than others. That's when God sends earthquakes into our lives to remind us that God's love is always greater than our certainties. So what are you certain of? What do you know to be absolutely true? What do you believe about health, life, death, love, mercy, forgiveness, righteousness, even, even God? And how might God be shaking up your beliefs, your way of life? What earthquake do you need right now to get rid of the things that get in the way of God's love? Are you like Nicodemus, overly certain of your theological beliefs and judgments, or perhaps putting too much stock in the physical realm? Are you like the woman at the well, trapped in being an outcast, full of despair and self-pity, someone who feels unlovable? Perhaps you're like Lazarus, drowning in death, and bound by chains of sin and mortality. Earthquakes are scary, and spiritual ones can be just as scary as physical ones. There is a reason Luther speaks so much of fearing God. God is completely outside our control, and that can make us uncomfortable. But in the end, it's a good thing. On one end of the spectrum, we can get trapped in death and despair, and on the other end, we can get too comfortable with our beliefs and our lives. Either way, God sends us an earthquake of love, remedying the first trap by reminding us of God's great love for us, and remedying the second by reminding us of God's great love for the world, even the people that we hate. Now I pray that you never experience a physical earthquake, but I won't make that same prayer about spiritual earthquakes. I have a hunch that we need those, even if they make us uncomfortable. We need God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit shaking us up, upending our certainties, and causing earthquakes of love in our lives that topple anything between us and God and between us and our neighbors. Amen. We sing now our hymn of the day, hymn 412, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. Thank you. 
join me in confessing our shared faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come before our triune God in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world, revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they may work towards a world where all of your children can enjoy peace. This day we pray especially for Israel and Palestine, the people of San Jose, Mali, Myanmar, Hong Kong, the Tigray region of Ethiopia, and all communities where there is ongoing violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially we lift up today Joe, Kristen, Steve, Evelyn, Linda, Anne, and those others we name now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living, in, living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for this worshiping community, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ 
be with you always. And also with you. As we have our offering music, I would encourage you to reflect upon the many ways in which God has blessed you and how God might be calling you to bless others. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Our sending hymn is in 413, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 